Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Talks. My name is Laura. I'm the founder of the Young Entrepreneurs of England. Today, we are going to be joined by the incredible Amber Barry from Network Like Amina, who we have partnered with to bring you these episodes. But we are also joined by a very special guest by the name of Martin Rowe. Before we get into who Martin is, I must remind you about the giveaway that we have going on. We are going to be announcing the winner this week. So make sure you click the link below in order to um, enter the giveaway for one of the Network Like Amina diaries. The, Entries close this Friday, so make sure you enter that by clicking below. Right, now on to Martin and who Martin is. A confident and established board advisor with a career history epitomized by success from product development to executing business strategies in the UK and overseas. Martin worked across multiple sectors, helping identify and maximize opportunities within their businesses. Working with CEOs and founders, Martin acts as a critical friend to the board and focuses on key areas for growth. What makes Martin unique is his ability to not only guard, but drives by taking action. He doesn't stand on the sidelines. He gets into the thick of things and goes from advising to heading the implementation. So without keeping you waiting any longer, here's Martin and Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi, Martin. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Hi, Laura. Hello, Laura. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Martin, for joining us. Um, we are very excited for this, Amber. This is our fourth episode. I can't believe how quickly it's come around. It's absolutely insane. I know I'm gonna miss it. This okay. series, like, we've had a really nice like couple of weeks, haven't we? So, um, but we'll be back with another series hopefully soon. Yes, we're gonna take this back and go to the drawing board and sort of see what we can put together again. Because yeah, Amber, so excited to to carry on working with you um, and carry on building on this relationship that we have. But Martin, I don't know if you just want to introduce yourself, tell us a bit about what you do, and then we can lead into uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Martin Rowe. Um, how, what do I do? Um, today, I make dreams come true. Now, that sounds a little bit corny, um, but I spend most of my time helping business owners to achieve what it is that they want to do. Now, what it is that I do is very different from like a normal consultant is a lot of consultants will sit on the sidelines and tell you what to do. But, you know, people are busy, um, especially if they're on their own. Last thing that you want is to have someone giving you more stuff to do. Great ideas, but not having the time to action them. So what I actually do is work with the people that I'm working with and actually do those things. And that's kind of how I got to um, know Amber, you know, certainly um, working on a project with her um, to help her with her business. But I'm sure she can give me a glowing reference to say how wonderful I actually am, you know, is that, you know, I've been able to give her the guidance that she's needed when she's needing it. But more importantly, give her another set of hands while she's growing a business. So that's kind of why I sit on the the uh, on the phrase of um, you know try and make dreams come true because that's exactly what I do, helping people get to their entrepreneurial dreams. No, that's awesome. Well, thank you again for being here um, and for chatting with us. We are going to be talking about what today, Amber. So we're going to be talking about a Scott analysis and how that can sort of feed into helping you with your networking and, and sort of building your business strategy. Um, and just to mention, if anyone does want a glowing review for Martin, you know, just hit me off and it's fine. Sort well, you out. Yeah, you gave me one from when we were speaking. You gave yeah, one to me. Yeah. So no, no, he's been so useful, like being a, you know, being a first full time entrepreneur and just having that guidance is is really, really, really helpful. So, yeah, if anyone wants some um, some help, you know who the guy is. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much for the uh, plug there, Amber. But um, <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully I can show other the others um, how useful I actually can be before they start to pester you. So yeah, um, yeah. and it's an interesting topic that you've chosen today, um, mainly because it's a Scott analysis is something which, you know, I changed mainly because it works on the old framework of a SWOT analysis. So anyone that has been involved in business or um, marketing, it basically is a very, very um, quick way of dissecting a business opportunity project. And it stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. 
Um, but I'll be perfectly honest, I changed it to Scott because I didn't like the word weakness. Um, I think, you know, not to sound too fluffy with people, but, you know, highlighting weaknesses makes people feel inferior. Um, so we changed weaknesses to challenges because that's kind of what every person, entrepreneur, you know, solopreneur, intrapreneur, you know, always faces is a challenge. So, you know, what we try and do now is this, you know, strengths, challenges, opportunities and threats. So, yeah, and that's one of the first things which I kind of do with people when I meet them um, is to dissect them, you know, compartmentalise those four very basic things to see where it is um, that we can help them. That's incredible. I absolutely love that because, like you said, weaknesses can sometimes, the word can sometimes come across as, I guess, in a way, a little bit demeaning towards what you're trying to do. And you're like, it's not a weakness. I'm not weak at something. I'm just struggling to sort of get around this kind of dip in the road. And so I think it's so important to highlight the fact that when you on this business journey, don't look at things as weaknesses or as faults to yourself, but rather see them as challenges. So I think that's a great, I love the new Scott analysis and it rolls off the tongue quite nicely as well. So I like yeah. that. I, yeah, and I think every day, like as an entrepreneur is challenging. So it fits quite nicely within that, definitely. Yeah. Well, it so, does, no, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so I think let's, look at this from like a, a new business perspective would you say that this is something Martin that a new business should do to start off with would you say that the Scott analysis is something they should do prior to even like getting started on their business absolutely um purely because you can really focus on what your offer is going to be um and interestingly you know the old-fashioned phrase of working to your strengths uh, really comes into play but if you also know what your strengths are, that really helps on how you market your business. Um, but not only that, it also gives you, you know, the, the analysis of not what to really concentrate on because that's the bit that comes naturally. So the challenges that you face are basically your um, opportunities to improve. So if you know you've got these challenges, whether it's a personal or a business one, they're the areas that you need to look at focusing on. And, you know, when you look at the um, opportunities, this kind of then starts to put your very loose business model together. So you can see where your business can take you, you know, the longer the list, the more, the more opportunities for your company to grow are. If it's quite a small list, it means that it's quite an either niche or restrictive business. So it can have growth, but potentially it might sort of top out and it basically just gives you a good opportunity to see something is if it's a good idea bad idea or um, something else in between and obviously the threats area sounds a bit you know threatening but they're obviously things that are outside your control where you need to be aware of them you know again big one at the moment and won't go into too much detail at the minute is supply chains you know certainly britain is in the middle of a stranglehold when it comes to supply chains from anything from produce to um sort of fuel to cement you know anything else in between so you need to be able you know, um to forecast and see what some of those threats are going to be and potentially how to navigate them as well. So where I tend to start is, you know, go through very much a conversation with people. So we start with what the strengths are because, you know, that's actually quite difficult for people to do, to be perfectly honest. Um, us as humans potentially find it quite difficult to say how good that we actually are. Um, I've actually been able to overcome that, to be perfectly honest. You know, it sounds a very arrogant thing to say, but, you know, I've done things like this so many times. It really starts to drive what your um, strengths actually are. But I remember, you know, most of the time that I start this sort of process with people is I ask people to tell me, you know, 10 of their greatest strengths. And they usually get to around sort of maybe three or four 
and then we move on to another topic and then other things come out in the conversation. So it really is an, um, an evolution um, of something that you can either do on your own, but I would say it's definitely best done with someone who can actually either guide you through it or, you know, highlight some of the things. And that doesn't necessarily need, it need, um, needs to be a paid professional like myself. That can be a best friend. It can be a family member. But what someone like myself is able to do is to give something that's impartial. You know, we look at the facts that are right in front of us and that's kind of how we, um, how we work. So, you know, once you've got that framework, you've then got, what your strengths are, which generally, you know, how you market yourself. You've then got your um, your challenges, the bits that we need to work on, the um, opportunities where the business is going to end up or go, um, and then the threats are the things that are going to stop us. And, you know, a good one for the threat is actually sometimes yourself, you know, self-doubt, all these other things um, really come into play. So, yeah, it, it just really highlights everything. Um, and I'm sure, Laura, you find that with some of your members um, of how things um, operate um, for them, you know, whether they're self or, you know, just starting out. There's always going to be these things and it's something that you can do time and time again. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I think it's happened to the best of us sometimes is you think you have a really great idea um, and you sort of don't do something like this or, you know, you don't do a SWOT analysis or you don't do a SCOT analysis um, and you sort of go into business. And I see it, I see it more and more um, where people think because they have a great idea, which helps automatically, that means their business will do quite well. Uh, or they see another idea and they think because somebody else has done that idea, I can do that idea because I'm skilled in that certain area as well. And what a lot of people don't, I know I didn't because when I first, um, like way back when, thankfully I've always been a part of quite an entrepreneurial family. So I used to sell for, I don't know if you remember the like old mobile phones that you could hang like them on lanyards and stuff like that around your neck. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I used to make like funky lanyards for for people to hang their phones on. Okay. Um, and I remember my mom sat me down and made me do sort of one of these analysis things, uh, but it wasn't called that, obviously. She made it a lot more. And I found myself, as I got older, losing, like when I was young, I was able to list, like, I'm great at this, I'm good at this, this is what it is. And I, I had no other perception of myself and my business and its ability to, to be something. But as I got older, I actually started to find myself Googling strengths and like Googling potential challenges because I lost what I understood as a strength and a challenge and a threat. And when I was doing it, I was like, I cannot believe I'm actually like even having to look into what a, a potential strength is for myself. Like, you know, sometimes, like you said, it becomes so difficult for people because we've been so influenced by many different things around us. It actually becomes incredibly difficult to, to write a big list on each of these topics because, like I said, we've been so influenced by other things around us. And that, to me, is why doing something like this is so important. Yeah, yeah, I agree with what both of you said. And just to reiterate on what Martin said, because um, when I first started working with Martin, this was one of the first things that we did. And to have him there was so useful. Like I would 100% recommend doing it with somebody else and not doing it on your own. Because like we were saying before, you know, you might, you probably will struggle to come up with your strengths because not everybody thinks that way of themselves and um, having somewhere there, there that's not biased and that can sort of, sort of um what I'm trying to say like fish them out of you you know yeah. um is, is just yeah it's really useful and and I guess like if we sort of move on to a little bit about talking about how actually sort of doing a Scott analysis and devising the successful like business strategy then that can help you play a you know it plays a massive part in networking and, and how you're going to network moving forward to to help your business and I, I'd say one of the first first big things for me is that um it, you know it helps you identify your target market and um it helps you make more sort of informative decisions about maybe which events and meetings that you might be able to attend because 
we've said it before, haven't we, Laura, being an entrepreneur, your time's just so, so, so valuable. Um, so you just want to make sure that you put in putting your time in the right places. Yeah, definitely. And it's also, we've said it, I think, pretty much in every single sort of episode that we've spoken on. It's okay to not attend every single networking event and to not, you know, even if you think it, it might even be a good fit, but it's just feels like it's too much. It's okay. We've, I just have to mention this because we have just passed it, uh, World Mental Health Day. You know, if you feel like things are getting too much and there is too much going on in your head and you need to take that break as entrepreneurs, it's important to, whether that be a strength of yours or a challenge of yours, it's important to note that you need to take that time to just take a, a breather because you don't want to hit a burnout. You don't want to come to a place where you feel like you can't do it anymore. Um, it is so important to take your mental health into consideration when starting a business, when writing down your strengths, your challenges, and all of that, because it plays such a huge part in um, the success of your business. So like I was saying, it's going a bit off topic. Don't You don't feel the need to have to attend all the networking events if, if you feel like it's just too much because we have to be quite selective um, as entrepreneurs, especially more times than not, you'll find an entrepreneur has more than one thing going on. <laughs> Let's be real, Amber. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> me, guilty, <laughs> guilty. Um, yeah. And Martin will probably shout at me for it. Yeah. Um, and, and he will probably go on about sort of time and, and you know, how important that is, what you, Martin, always saying that to yeah. me. Well, Make sure well, you're not exactly. undervaluing yourself. <laughs> well, exactly. And, you know, and it's all about focus. And it's interesting what you say about... Um, burnout and you know someone that's experienced that in the past as well you know it's another reason why I got into doing this is to try and help alleviate those issues that people face um because burnout is very much a real thing and you know it's quite destructive and takes a long time to recover from um and you know once you go through that path um certainly of making your decisions uh, about you know, networking in particular, because that is a challenge, you know, certainly with people that are on their own time, you know, time and cash flow are probably two of the biggest things, you know, cash flow kills businesses. If you don't have one, you don't have business, you know, can't pay yourself, can't pay anyone. So, you know, those are two, you know, real challenges that you do. So, you know, one of the challenges that you have is networking. So you need to network to grow your business, to get out there, but you also need to be very targeted to do that. So, if you have a list of 20 events, you know, pick five, but go to those five with absolute purpose. Know who the people are, you know, try and get a list of people before you go. Um, usually not quite forthcoming from people, which is a shame, really. That's something that I'd, I'd personally like people to change, you know, to be open with who's going. So you go to an event and know who it is that you want to speak to rather than trying to go around a room and, you know, have, I'm going to say a lot of meaningless conversations, but you can certainly spot the parasites within a networking room quite easily. The ones that are just there to sell, um, not build relationships. You know, that's something else why I've, I've liked working with Amber in particular. You know, she's got the networking thing really sourced and she's developed a, a tool to really help people focus on that um, and, you know, benefit themselves and someone else. So what you've also then got when you go through things like your networking challenges is, you know, time. You know, how do I spend my time? You know, you can then look at things like time blocking, you know, how do I not get caught up in some of the brain fog? Um, um, you know, again, not this isn't Amber, by the way. It might sound similar to Amber, but I did do some work with someone and, you know, they started out on their journey and they've just basically said, I feel like I've done nothing this week because I feel like I've just had endless meetings. So the big question that I would always ask is that, you know, what have you gained from those meetings? Is it a new relationship, new partnership? And if you don't feel that, you know, you have gained those things, um, basically don't continue them. You know, that's where, again, us as humans can be quite shy. Um, and certainly as entrepreneurs, we need to be quite ruthless, you know, certainly in terms of how we um, spot the good from the bad. Uh, I mean, again, I would always build a relationship professionally with anyone that wants to build them, regardless of whatever industry that they are. But, you know, if people want to just build 
you know, a sales line, that's not for me. You know, it takes a long, long time to do these things. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting uh, state of affairs that we've got when we start to do these um, things. But the one that I really like doing, and I think this is the one that really gets people fired up, is that once we kind of do like the strengths, you know, which is a little bit egotistical, I think people look, you know, the challenges where people think, oh, we well, you know that's quite depressing. But when you start to look at your opportunities, that's where you get, you know, the real sparks of imagination. Um, I remember I did this once with one company and they thought they only had three opportunities. By the time we'd finished, we ended up with 27. So we ended up, yeah, you know, so they then had like a five year plan of how to start a business, grow it and what they start to introduce. Now, some of those opportunities weren't great, but, you know, they were opportunities nonetheless that they can think about, you know, they might not be main parts of the business, but it might be some form of ebook that they can sell for, you know, 10 quid, that type of thing. It's all cash generated um, and it all helps. So the more opportunities and revenue streams you've got, the more successful that you're going to be. Yeah. A lot of the opportunities as well, I think, involve, you know, meeting meeting new people to help you get to that certain point of that opportunity, you know. So like going to networking events is key because you just don't know what what doors are going to open you don't know who's going to be there like martin said not many people provide an attendee list so you just sort of going off the vague description of what kind of event it is who might be there um so you do sort of have to do you know keep a bit of an open mind on um trying to strengthen those opportunities wherever you can i think where we um sort of try and sort of also focus as people as well are those um you know threats you know, we spend a lot of time dwelling on them. Um, they need to, we need to be aware of them, but we can't spend the time thinking about them all the time because otherwise we just go into do nothing. You know, this is where people potentially start to fall into the um, first starts of burnout, to be perfectly honest. They start to spend the time thinking about the threats to a business um, or the, the issues that they face and then starting to dwell on them and overthink them. So yeah, we're quite complex people as humans. Um, and you know, there's another analogy that I really quite like, it's called KISS, which is keep it simple, stupid. You know, um, that again is a great way of just looking at, at something like this, is to not keep it complicated or overcomplicated, just keep it really, really simple. Yeah, and I think sometimes, you know, especially doing something like this. I know I personally have been, you get bogged down on the idea of um, trying to get too in depth with things. Um, and so how would you, let's say I'm a, a new business starting out, how would you um, suggest that I approach doing one of these? You know, if I'm someone who gets caught up in trying to unpack things and going too far in depth and then going off on another thing, um, would you recommend I get like a piece of paper out or how would you recommend a young business owner start doing a Scott analysis? Um, oh, that's that. I love that question. Now, my favorite way of doing this is to find a room with a big whiteboard and just basically go to town on it, you know, set loads of sections up. The bigger, the better. You know, if you've not got opportunity to use a whiteboard, you know, pieces of paper, you know, I've done that myself, you know, got four pieces of paper, wrote them out on a on the uh, kitchen table, you know, and I've got my compartments, you know, what I would definitely say don't do, don't do it on your laptop and don't do it on an electronic device yeah. and certainly don't do it on your phone, which I've, you know, I've tried just because I wanted to know what it was like and it was hellish. Um, but you know, even though we're having this sort of conversation over, you know, over the internet, you know, technology really complicates things. So what you actually want to do is literally just have a pen and a piece of paper um, and sit somewhere quiet. You know, if you're on your own, go to a library, you know, sit in that space where you can just get stillness, um, create the environment for creativity um, is what I always try and advise to people. Um, again, don't do it with a screaming baby in the background. I've 
made it very sadly made the mistake of doing that very recently um i've got an eight week old so yes you know try not to do those things um <laughs> in an area where that isn't quite um in keeping with what it is that you're trying to do i mean like i say the the focus needs to be on yourself and the great thing is is that um it's something that you can come back to so don't also feel that you need to do it all in one sitting now it's great if you feel that you can do it in one sitting but you know if that once that sort of thought train goes or you're distracted by something that's your brain telling that you've had enough so you know listen to what your brain's telling you and you know go away do something else come back to it a little bit later on in the day or day after what i would say is don't try and do it over you know a period of a couple of weeks it doesn't work like that you know again what also um can really stifle entrepreneurs is this time lag that they kind of do or overthink things you know it the greatest things in leadership um and sort of business growth are actually about being decisive so you know get the information done quickly concisely and directly and then kind of get make your decisions from that and then action them you know uh, procrastination also you know kills businesses so you know we've all had those moments where we sit down to do something then look up and then the clock's three hours later and you feel like you've not achieved so um, another tip as well make sure your phone is nowhere to be seen you know <laughs> Martin, you told me about this one I actually, yeah. I actually deleted um, WhatsApp off my laptop to stop me getting uh, notifications. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm guilty of that. My phone, my phone is usually by me. Yeah, yeah you I know. Do, I do. I'm sometimes like, ah, don't touch it. <laughs> Yeah, well, a great tool that, um, you know, that we have is that we literally have a computer in our pockets right next to us. You know, we can achieve anything with that pretty much. Um, but it's just a big time pit. You know, that's the other thing where, you know, I think people lose things is that they can be so fundamental to a business, but they can be so destructive as well. And yeah. interestingly, I treated myself to a... Um, the new iPhone and I was really impressed with some of the features that they've put on that because you can actually press a button now to focus on work you know focus on personal time okay, so because I, I also got the new one <laughs> what is so that? yeah so if you go into it you know I'm yeah. becoming an Apple salesman as well now yeah. um, <laughs> but if you go into it you can set them up so you can actually set up contacts so you know nearest and dearest if there's an emergency but you can basically just press this button and it turns your phone off effectively, but it will only send you the information that you want to. So, okay. you know, you can quite easily go off the grid to the people that you don't want to be interrupted by. Um, but again, it's always worthwhile to tell people when you do those things. Um, so when we have a look at things like our strengths, you know, one of my strengths, um, which I've definitely got better at, um it's become my time management and how to you know block out time um and see what's important uh, because again if we kind of have this thing where we have an open calendar you know that's kind of again the other challenges i've got a lot of people to speak to but not enough time to sort of do it but if you have this open calendar where you can you know slip in a meeting with someone you know in 20 minutes there's a detrimental thing that comes from that you know i it's probably something that you wanted to do that is valuable to yourself but you're giving your time to someone else to help them at the detriment to yourself so there is a discipline that you then start to come uh, from um is to be quite you know selfish you know but there's nothing wrong with being selfish as long as it's not selfish all the time um and again you know time blocking really works from that uh, from that perspective you know set the times out in the day that you know this is what I focus on it's literally like setting a meeting with yourself I'm going to have a three-hour meeting with me to get this um, accomplished and in I that think that's time, one of the one of the most valuable things that Martin's taught me is um like say no <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah, I've learned that the hard way as well, um, just with my own little business that I have, the pet service business. Um, I kept putting myself out 
and it was to it it wasn't losing me money but i wasn't getting i was getting money but like not uh, it was causing me to pay money that i should have been getting that's it, like the right yeah well that's it yeah and yeah, i found myself it. going far too out of my way for my clients when i could have just like really taken a step back and been like okay right let's relook at it but because i was like yes 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 all the time i was back and forth and up and down and i had so much anxiety from it because I felt like I was going to let somebody down. But then when I had, I, I, I guess you could say I went through a uh, like burnout when I was like, I'm exhausted. I can't do this anymore. This is it. Like, you know, I, I need to stop everything. I took a, 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 you know, step back and was like, I actually need to start saying no and giving my clients boundaries because otherwise they're going to completely control my life and I need to make sure I have weekends I need to make sure I have a holiday I need to make sure that I am sleeping properly and resting well in order to be the best for them and since I've been able to put those boundaries in and have you know I've got I was showing Amber my calendar last week the little squares and you know putting things into a bit more perspective for me and saying no it feels great <laughs> because i yeah. know it's going to benefit me it's going to benefit them it's going to benefit the animals like it it's the best thing that we can learn is to say no to things that aren't going to help us really it starts off exactly. as a challenge but eventually it's going to be a strength isn't it yeah my, uh, but it, like it I, also sits as a threat as well and this is where <laughs> the interesting one is so it's kind of like if it becomes a strength to time block but you know before you get to that point it moves from a challenge to then the more you do it it moves to a, a real threat to your business um because you don't actually add any value to anyone whether that be your client or yourself um and you know we look at things like our return on investment or roi as people um put it down to but that also comes to a personal return on investment as well so again it's not the financial games come when you actually keep yourself happy and, and it's funny how people think it's the other way around and yeah. it's not yeah I love that. I absolutely love that because um, this year, since I've got my stuff together, since I've got my like life together, I've noticed that my state of mind, who I am um, as a person, I'm much happier and much more um, able to, uh, you know, flow with my my days of work and being able to manage and time manage things a lot better because I've given myself boundaries, set boundaries for other people. I've learned how to say no obviously there's days where I go above and beyond there's days where things don't go to plan um but I've come to a place where I am I'm happier and that sort of like is, has a ripple effect on everything else around me and it it really does when you come to a place where you're able to manage things and don't feel because when you say no to something that you or sorry when you say yes to something that you feel like you need to say no to it sits funny with you like it doesn't feel right so there's been a couple like I said there were a couple times where um I went out of my way for clients and I felt off for like the whole day being like I should have said no and I wasn't happy with that and it, it it really I mean I was getting home super late getting up really early it just was like chaos and since I've been able to control that chaos it's I'm happier and that completely reflects all 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 around me oh I totally agree with you and you know that that really works um I mean some of the things that I've you know I've tried to work with people on and my whole philosophy when I work with someone is to get them to a point where the business has grown to a point where they only have to work four hours a week if that you know so they're dipping into a business um but then things like culture come into it so again you know i've worked or been a um been aware of um you know late night emails which i think is some, one of the biggest ones for people is that you know people email at a time that's convenient for them so it could be 11 o'clock at night and then an email pops in 
that person expects a response at 11 o'clock at night. Now, me personally, I won't reply back to people at 11 o'clock at night unless I, unless I want to. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if people challenge me and say, well, I've emailed you last night and, you know, this is at 8.30 in the morning, this is a true life scenario, why have you not replied? And I'm like, because I've got a life. And, you know, you know, you don't dictate my life. If you want, you know me to respond to an email send it at a time that is convenient that you think I can do something with but I'm old-fashioned as well so I work on the basis that if I respond to an email in 24 hours and again this is about managing expectations challenge um you know setting out from the outset is that I'll reply to emails in 24 hours now if I can then do it in two how good do I look but if I say I'll do it in two but it takes me 24 hours. Yeah. I look really bad. So, you know, it's about setting those expectations of people. And, uh, you know, Google and most of the email clients allow you to schedule your emails. So if I write something, I generally send that or schedule it to send between 7 and 8 o'clock the next day. So someone's got time to digest it and read it and, you know, on their time. And they, they've got the day to do something with it. So that's kind of like a courteous way that I like to work. Um, and again, what I try and do with people. Um, again, it always goes back to time, time and money, you know, um, the biggest resources that we, we, we actually have. Yeah, awesome. Well, let's, if we can quickly go through just like in summary, the Scott analysis. So maybe we give like a, some uh, ideas on what a strength could be, what a challenge could be, what an opportunity and what a threat could be, um, and just sort of summarize it as a whole, just so people can get a picture of it all. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, strength, you know, kind of looks at character. Um, you know, I, I'm really good at networking. You know, I've got the ability to talk and communicate to people. Uh, that goes down as a strength. What then comes as a, you know, as an opposite challenge, I'm not very good at marketing, that type of stuff, you know, because again, we can't be good at everything. We then look at things like, um, you know, um, strengths for businesses, particularly, um, you know, have I got a good target market? You know, am I totally aware of what it is that uh, my offer is? You know, if it's a challenge, you know, I'm not clear on what my offer is that's something that then needs to be worked on. Um, so that's kind of like the things that you can look at, you know, but the strengths again, you know, what do you do well, what do you enjoy doing is another one. It's not just what you do well, but what you enjoy doing, because that's kind of like where your focus should, should be. You know, I'll use Amber for this one because I know her so well. She's amazing at networking, probably one of the best networkers that I've um, ever come across, you know, and she's decided to turn that into a business. But without saying what her challenges are, she's got challenges, you know. So the whole idea of what we try and do with um, Amber is to get, you know, to focus on what she's really good at. And that's networking, talking to people and making people aware of what it is um, that she's doing. Um, opportunities. Um, if you look at um, the markets in which you're in, if you see how you can diversify so you've got your your simple straightforward offers and then kind of like what you really think would be a, a nice to have so you can look at those um what trends are kind of on topic at the moment now this is always a key key one for people is to not get caught up in the shiny butterfly moment of you know, there's something in the distance that looks really good because by the time you can get something to move, the trend may have gone. But again, this is where small businesses or micro businesses really can excel is that they can move with the trend really quickly. So the larger companies just can't. So again, it's always interesting to see what trends you can tap into with your um, business. Um, threats, these all sorts from you know supply chain issues to um you know your own mental health to you as a person and i would probably say that the biggest threat to any entrepreneur is actually themselves um and again that probably sounds quite sinister but it's not it's all about the mental belief of working through whatever problems it is that come across because that's basically what an entrepreneur is 
it's a problem solver. You find a problem for um, others that you look to solve. But within that process, you solve a lot of problems for yourself along the way. Um, and again, you know, things like your competitors. So if you highlight who your competitors are, and I would always say, look at three, three people that you either admire as a competitor, because again, you can see what they do well and build on it. Um, and, you know, one of the finalists, um, you know, ones is to, you know, look at those weaknesses or challenges that you've had um and look to see how you shore them up because you know the the challenges that you face can turn into threats if they get left untouched you know for example if you don't know how to manage cash flow or how to recognize um where business is losing money over time that challenge is going to seep into a massive threat because it's then going to really challenge your business. So, you know, think of the challenges as like holes in the ship. You know, you need to try and plug them as best as you can, because if you don't, it will just sink the boat. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm definitely due a new an analysis, actually. It's yeah, such definitely. a useful tool just to like keep reevaluating like yourself and, and where you're at. And um, also just to mention, Martin, I'm really looking forward to that time when I'm working four, day, four hours a week, not days. <laughs> yeah four hours a week that'll be nice oh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely I think this week I'm going to do another Scott analysis for myself because um you know and I, I think it is important that businesses do it quite often um to constantly refresh their business themselves like Martin said to potentially see if a challenge has has maybe fallen into now a threat um it's great if you have employees to get them all involved in doing it if it's just yourself to do it um and yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a, a great tool for your business to have. I think just like the elevator pitch that we spoke about last week, um, having those two things like equipped with you to constantly remind yourself of, um, it's going to help a lot. It's going to help set you up for success. Well, absolutely. And, and, you know, certainly another tip is, you know, challenges that you face, um, try and limit that to five per session. And basically that helps you focus on what the, the, the key challenges actually are, you know, because we can put 20 challenges down, but it's like, well, now what do I do with them? But if you force yourself to put your top five challenges, then set yourself a timeline of 90 days to try and get those challenges um, sort of boxed off. Um, you then reassess it, do another five challenges in 90 days time. I mean, again, you'll, you'll find things that come up along the way, but again, it's about being focused on what really drives a business um, and making sure that, you know, you keep that focus. So I'd probably say, certainly if you're starting out in your first year, um, do this before you start and try and do it every three months, you know, as a whole or four months, sorry, because it's four months in a year. God, wow, that doesn't, doesn't bode well for me when I don't know how many months in a year there are, but, um, you know, and then try and do it every six months, um, at least yearly, you know, try and look at it at least once a year, um, if not more. The more you do it, the more familiar with your company you will actually be. Obviously, things like once a month is probably a little bit too much, but I think if you can find the time to do it every three months, um, you're really on to a, a good uh, way to structure a business. There's yeah. plenty of space in the uh, in the diary to do it. <laughs> oh, awesome. Exactly. I can't wait. I've, um, ever, I've ordered mine, so I cannot wait for it to <laughs> come. So I'm super excited about that. But I just wanted to add on um, with what we were chatting about, um, how, and it was my sister who I was speaking to about it when I first started um, Yo England and first started on this journey. I was like, I literally find, feel like I'm at constant battle with myself. Like, uh, um, what's that like a self-doubt will creep in or a, a, a piece of like an, a negative thought will come in where it'll be like oh you're not good enough or you can't do this and she was saying to me that when you branch out and become your you know your own this own person and you sort of um moving away from your childhood and all of that security a lot of those um fears and doubts creep in and come to a head especially when you start running a business because you are literally responsible for that. You are responsible for the actions that are taken, for the outcomes, 
for your, like you said, your, your cash flow, your networking, your marketing, your clients. And so all those insecurities, whether you're insecure in speaking in, in front of people, whether you're insecure of attending events alone, you know, whether you're not that good at copywriting or graphic design, all of those things come to a head at literally at once, it seems. And so it can be yeah. a super difficult thing to sort of or a journey to go on and again that's why I actually think the Scott analysis is so important is because you can you're able to and and working on there Martin you know choosing five challenges that have challenged you so mine were uh, I used to literally freak out trying to do uh, zoom calls it just I was like in cold sweats stumbling over my words it was crazy and I found now zoom calls have helped me actually speak in public um, so at events and stuff like that, I found they've been so beneficial for that. Um, and so like you were saying, uh, picking five challenges for people to work on over the next 90 days, I think that's a great way of looking at it. So, and, and giving yourself like that challenge. I always say to my husband, Wes, I love working on myself. I love challenging myself and watching myself overcome like speaking in public, copywriting, you know, content creation. I absolutely love watching myself overcome those challenges. And um, I think a great way to do it is giving yourself that like 90 day challenge. Working on yourself is always, always going to be an advantage to your business, isn't it? You work on yourself, you're basically working on your business as well. You know, I was saying this to, to my partner as well the other day about um, you know doing a, one of my social media accounts and I was just saying like it's gonna be really interesting to look back in like four six months time and just see like how how much it's like grown and how how much it maybe looks better or hopefully it does yeah. Um, yeah definitely about working on yourself and, and always constantly learning as well yeah and don't one. be don't be like too hard on yourself like um I used to, uh, sometimes I would make like spelling errors and I would completely beat myself up about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm human. Like it's totally normal to make a spelling error or not put a comma or something like that. So don't be so hard on yourself. Even if you've made what you feel is a really big mistake, it's it's not. Just don't be so hard on yourself um, in anything that you do when it comes to running and starting a business. Well, it is. And, you know, um, the greatest investment you'll ever make is in yourself. Um, you know, I have spent quite a lot of money on myself in terms of, you know, development, you know, courses. You know, I always said that I never had the time to read, but now I've got a real passion for audio books. So, you know, I can go for audio books like there's no tomorrow because I, they, they're just there. So, you know, that thirst for knowledge um, is basically key to anyone to keep growing. And, you know, what anyone also can look to do, you know, by using one of these analyses is that you can find the areas where you need help. So when it comes to things like your business plan, so again, if you mention something like copywriting, you know, it's like, well, one of the first things that I want to do when, you know, the business can afford it and sustain it, I want to bring a copywriter in. You know, I want someone to do this because that's my weakness. Um, I mean, the way that I've always looked at things is when I'm sat in a boardroom and I'm at the top of the table is I actually want to be the um, least clever person in the room, which people think that's quite a bizarre thing to say. But if I surround myself with people that know more than me, um, all I have to do is then make informed decisions, um, which is, again, you know, where one of my greatest strengths is, is the ability to, you know, um, you know, dissect the information that I'm given to make decisions that come from it. And again, that's probably, you know, one of the other greatest tips that I could have is, you know, don't be precious about what you don't know. You know, have conversations with people and ask for help. You know, sometimes you've got to pay for it, but there are times and, you know, that people will willingly give you some advice to get started, you know, with a view to, you know, having to pay for stuff in the future. But there's always help out there. You've just got to ask for it. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much, um, Amber, Martin. I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to add um, before we... I feel like we could talk all day about it, so you're probably better off wrapping up, Laura. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. Um, Amber, we're going to, uh, I think, 
we'll speak about it afterwards, but we're going to do that draw for um, the Network Like You Mean It diary. Um, so that'll be done this week. So make sure you stick around it. And, and if you haven't entered, still enter that. Um, but yes, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, Amber, I'll miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I wish you every Tuesday, same time. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. worry, we'll, we'll get it in the diary again soon. Awesome, cool. Well, thank you so much and I'll chat to you guys all soon. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, no, it's been a awesome. real pleasure thank to you. speak to uh, two like-minded uh, people and, uh, you know, good luck with um, both your businesses as well and everything else that you're doing and obviously to uh, everyone else that's part of your collective networks as well. Um, good luck. Thank Thanks, you. Martin. Welcome. Take care. Bye. Bye.